concerned. It's Marzali and Tyloo to kick things off here in the final game of today. ESL 1 Road to Rio for Asia. And we're heading on to Dust 2. It's Marzali's map choice, but certainly a home ground territory for Tyloo as well. It's going to be a tough one for the Mongolian squad, but let's see how they negotiate this new Tyloo roster. This is their map pick. Tyloo's actually opted to start off on that CT side, uh, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, let's see it. Here we go. It's the um, debut for Slowly, um, the, new, the second debut for Denk. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. back again. Uh, let's see how he goes. He's going to take a bit of a duel towards long early on. Oh, well, not too shabby there at all. Onto Machine Gun. Does draw the first blood of this best of three. Not a bad feeling for him. Somebody is as somebody does as he runs up and down mid. He's down to 6 HP, however, so that's a little bit unfortunate for him. But what I do like for Tyloo is that they're essentially now sandwiching Marzali, and there's not really anywhere for them to go apart from toward A. Double Smokes on the cross is going to allow Marzali to do just that and cross over to that side if they wish to do so. Slowly boost it up into the site, help with the flash of somebody. Of summer, rather. It's going to be a pretty critical duel for somebody down there on Ooh. long, but maybe not as critical as it needs to be. Slowly, one of the new players in the Tyloo roster just picks three heads off of Marzali, and you can consider that the round over. 50 seconds on the clock. Wouldn't count out just yet. All Zilk needs to do is land two one-taps. Oh, and maybe easier said than done. Slowly already on a bit of a tear. Summer hasn't yet had much of an impact on this round. They are giving him some opportunities here. I see a few heads sort of peeking out. Summer is not wary of the challenge at all and cleans Zilkenberg up. No problems. One and zero for Tyloo. A little bit too indecisive there from Tyloo, and that's going to, uh, from, from Marzali rather, and slowly is going to capitalize. Very nice pistol work from the man. Already showing that he's keen to kick off his debut for Tyloo here on the right foot. As you would be, man. If you're a player from China and you get the call up to Tyloo, you want to take that with both hands and never let go. I think so, yeah. If uh, if there's any question of getting Zeta and Freeman back, you want to play so well that they don't even think about it. Yeah, exactly. At least you have the added benefit of being someone that can speak Chinese, uh, which is obviously not quite there for, for someone like Zeta. Um, although I guess the argument would be between Dan King and Zeta and then Freeman and slowly. But either way, it's uh, always going to be... Nice to put a good foot forward for Tyloo. Now, even if the replacements do come back on in sometime in the future, you want to be in the good books with this organization and with this core group of players. Yep, so, Marzali going to take a singular save. A couple of Deagles purchased up to try to do a little damage to this Tyloo economy. So far, nothing really going the way of Marzali other than a little bit of short control. But they don't have a single piece of utility, so it's going to be just bodies thrown at this A-bomb site towards somebody and towards Dan King. Dan King does hit a tap on Tamara. Somebody's making short work of these low HP players. It should be an ace for him here as he does just miss that USP shot. So Summer gets the final kill. Two and zero though for Tyloo and no problems there at all. Good farm from somebody. Unfortunately was with the Famous rather than the SMG. So no great kill reward for doing that. And here Tyloo, I would not be surprised to see a bit of a bonus round out of them. Famous, whole bunch of SMGs, a scout, slowly bought up an M4 in the second round, so going to be a little bit more costly for him should they lose this. Five rifles here for Marzali. Your map pick, what's your first gun round for us? He already copped a tag from Dan King, who was looking fearless with the scout <laughs> so far. Say. Multiple repeats into middle. Doesn't matter whether you've got Glocks or AKs, this man does not care. Absolutely no respect at and all. That's, and that's Dan King's playstyle, man. Yeah. That is Dan King in a nutshell. Does not care. He's going to frag you. Looking forward to seeing how he is going to go in this Tyloo roster for the second time. Dan King has been spotted out this time by News, but they're not aware there's a player close. It was a bait and switch setup, and Summer makes Marzali pay. He does. So that's going to be a one for one early on. Only taking out the scout so far. Marzali looking like they're grouped up outside of long, but somebody does not need a reason to get aggressive. He just does it. And attacker is going to get one as well. So into a 2 one, 3 A little bit of long control going in the favor of Marzali will be forfeited as Mara gets a move on back towards the middle. Yeah, Summer peeking through the mid doors. Not sure that he spotted too much just yet. It was somebody that slid across the car as well. So they have a decent setup over toward A. And we'll have a bit of a peek down there as well. Information going 
over to Tyloo that there's not a whole lot going on at long, which is going to prompt Summer to return back into CT spawn. Mara, he turned away at the wrong time, and Summer is going to blitz both Mara and Sogu out of the server. Two kills of the UMP up against a couple of AKs. And that is not a great start for Marzali. It's a bonus round one by Tai Lu, which means their economy is going to be absolutely out of control now. Marzali going to have to take a singular save. And you can see Dan King, I mean, he's just going to go MP9 armor. He's going to go make some cash. Someone's going to upgrade that UMP to an AK, and I'd say they're feeling pretty happy now. News this time, the one with the scout. Dan King's got himself on MP9, looking to build a bit of that cash up. He's over on A. But there has been another push from somebody. I mean, I guess I really shouldn't be surprised at this point. It works out okay. Mara drops. Somebody doesn't take a lick of damage. Hmm. Well, a couple of pistols and a scout being invested in by Marzali. They're looking to do a little bit of economic damage. Obviously, Tyler's got off to the dream start. Somebody trying to farm up some players, but can't hit your machine Ooh. gun, who's just jumping across the screen. News gets a pick as well. Mad advantage for Marzali. Can they capitalize on it, though? I'm not so sure about that. Dan King is in such a good position to shut this down. If he gets the timing right, which he has, Zilkenberg's a free kill. So is Sogu. And it's all going to be over for Marzali. Dan King gets three. He might well push into News here as well, who's low on HP. And unless News hits the shot of his life, He's probably not going to survive. I mean, for the games I watched of him and uh, from these first couple of rounds, I mean, it is only anti-eco. If I was to describe Dan King for, to you and you weren't familiar with him, it's somebody but an Orpa. Mm. <laughs> there you go. I like it. I mean, um, some people have probably said that. All you need for Tyloo to be good is just more somebodies. So there you go. Maybe domestically. <laughs> well, they're playing domestically, are they not? They are, indeed. It's going pretty well. <laughs> so far, so good. Dan King's got a scout again. He can afford an AWP. He could probably afford two or three AWPs if they pulled their money together, but he doesn't need it. He's happy with the scout. Summer and attacker and somebody having a bit of an exchange down there on long. It goes the way of Tyloo. Three, four, two, the trade. He's peeking an AWP, ladies and gentlemen, and he's headshot news through the door with a scout, and then he's finished off Zilkenberg as well. He's a madman. Clip that. He gets tagged through the door, and his instant response, the instant response in his brain is, I guess I better go take the peek then. He's clearly <laughs> pulling the bolt back on his orb. If I don't see that on Reddit later on today, I don't know what I'm going to say. Look there you go, this. Dan King, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it was, was it a no the player that Tyloo have selected, and now you can see why. It's absolute terror. <laughs> now, I'm hearing click, click, click in the chat. And uh, players are buying and not buying, and I don't know what's going to happen here. Well, it's like that round we saw with Vici as well. I guess uh, they wanted the dead round, but it's not being yeah, given to them. It seems like it's not. Well, that's going to give slowly a lot of positioning here. Somebody, of course, as well, to start off the proceedings. It's a weird looking round. You'd never really see an engagement go like this. Well, Tyloo is playing T side on CT side. They've taken the B tunnels and they're kind of getting punished for it. And Marzali, I guess they're just going to be allowed to take this B bomb I site. Love, I love, by the way, that Dan King's just gone into this round with a scout as well. This yeah. guy just does not care, hey. No, no, no. What is... <laughs> what am I watching? I'm loving it. Me too, actually. But Dan King, not going to make it work this time, nor will Attacker. Seems like the House of Cards is coming, crumbling down. Not that it was really a House of Cards. Tyler up 5-0. and zero. Maybe somebody's got something left in the tank here. There's a lot of money. There's no real necessity for him oh. to save this M4. And if he's hitting shots like that... Why not give it a crack? I All mean, he has to do is check the mid-doors, which he won't. If you win the round, you are going to be saving your M4. I'll tell you that, Jordan. <laughs> That's true. Uh, well, he's going to get into the site pretty quickly. News peeks out, gets the headshot, and the fun is over. But I'm sure there's more fun to be had in this next round. Oh, tactical timeout for Marzalite. Did just win that last round after looking like they wanted to call it off. So they've probably got to be pretty happy with that. Okay. 
Well, I guess for Tyloo, you know, I'm enjoying their roster changes, but I'm going to need to see Bottle on this team as well before I'm fully satisfied who with the you levels of aggression. Who are you replacing <laughs> with Bottle? Uh, let's take out Summer. Too much tactical IGLing going on. Yep. Um, you know, just let them all loose. Fair enough. That's good to me. <laughs> well, Marzalite, they are going to be taking long Ooh. here. Nice flashbangs. It looks like News has made his way into pit. And he's been the standout for Marzali so far, but I guess you can count on Attacker to be hitting shots like that. Yeah, Attacker, though, does re-peak, so probably will Danking. He's ready and waiting for Mara's head to appear through that smoke. Does just miss that shot, but a shot goes flying past his head as well. So all's fair in love and war. And bomb control is taken by Marzali. Okay, well... They're going to potentially be using Long to try to head into this A-bomb site. Somebody lies in wait, though, on a bit of an off-angle. Big spray from somebody. Five and bullets. It's going to work out nicely for him. Who needs five bullets when you can get two kills? I'll take that trade any day. Marzali looking a bit hesitant here, trying to take this A-bomb site. Too yeah. much indecision, unfortunately, and it is starting to cost them. It certainly is. Don't really have anything to help them cross here either, nor pick up the bomb, which is out in the middle of No Man's Land. So Zilkenberg here with the AWP is probably going to have to do the lion's share of the duty. And jumps right up into Dan King's scope. A little bit too good there as the spam comes through onto Sogu. He's really just not being given any chances here at all. Uh, pretty nice spray down initially onto slowly, but there's always one more player to deal with. Good round for Tyloo to keep three guns alive. Somebody again, the MVP. I think gonna that's be, what he's I really doing. I think we're going to be seeing that a couple of times this competition. He's I'll tell, just you, tell you what. Thurston for those MVPs. <laughs> okay, six and one for Tyloo. Very one sided so far. Silk back on the AWP, unable to hit the door shot there. Long control for Tyloo established this time around. It will not be a brawl over long. Marzali instead going to redirect their attention back towards middle, back towards catwalk perhaps. Little boost to see if anybody is peaking catwalk in lower there. Will not be the case. Methodical utility usage is going to get news up to the top of Catwalk now. What's the plan here for Marzali? A minute and ten on the clock. They've got Catwalk control. They've got some players minding the extremities towards long, towards uppers. But uh, so far, indecision has been their biggest weakness, and they need to get a little bit of a wriggle on. Doesn't seem like there's much wriggling going on right now. Taking their sweet time, Marzali. Slowly clearing out bedroom. Attacker is there, and so too is Dan King, but Dan King is just reverting his attention back to short. I was about to say, Attacker's got a molly as well. It's just going to be double mollies into Longheart, and Marzali, if they had any reason to be indecisive, it's going to be multiple bits of utility. Now Dan King, seeing if he can pick one on the cross to A. Ooh, does. Just missed that shot. He'll get out around the corner for now. Continues to back away towards Long, which Attacker is still holding down. Summer, in the meanwhile, came up behind Mara. Sogu, potentially the linchpin here for Marzali if he can get some work done. As Dan King posts himself in pit, looking towards the site. Zilkenberg catches Summer oh. on the entry. Lots of kills from Marzali as Tyloo tries to enter their way up short. And for Dan King, he really can't do a whole lot right now. Slowly, the only other option of choice for Tyloo has not yet pushed too far forward on short. Time is running out, and I think that's probably oh. the round, even despite a nice couple of clean shots from Dan King. He'll be able to save the AWP here. But that's about it. 
don't often see it going that way. I mean, it was a man disadvantage for Marzali. They were stuck in no man's land on the site. They had Sogu out on an island behind lo uh, those long doors. Tyloo had short control and long control. Very, very often in that situation, a man up with short and long control. You see the CTs be able to complete a successful retake. But Marzali, they did it the old Mongol style. They shot their way out of a bad situation and they were able to secure the frags that they needed to be able to convert that gun round. Much needed gun round from Arzali, but it's not the only needed gun round for them, unfortunately. Down two and six means that they have a lot more work to do here. Quickly out long this time go the Mongolians. Well, Talu's economy is on the breaking point, so this would be a fantastic round for Marzali to be picking up. Nice little cute short boost. Yeah. Trying to get Dan King a pick into lower, but he won't find anybody. Marzali, with that long control, will just fall back in towards spawn side and are looking to size up this B side of the map. Who's over there and wait slowly. for them? It is going to be slowly. It's been a fairly solid anchor player on eHome. See if he's able to continue that trend. Yeah, you do just need one of those kinds of guys, I think, on Tai Lu. It's a pretty good fit into this roster, at least in theory, on paper. I think the whole thing with the Chinese scene is it seems like they usually don't necessarily get the players that they want. Yeah. So it's good to see them get some players, which kind of makes sense. Bit of an interesting engagement here, potentially in mid. Some are holding aggressively. The flash goes through. He's going to clean up Mara, but there's plenty of Marzali players there. Attacker has bitten off more than he can chew by pushing there. Somebody on the short push as well went down, and now Danking. Well, he's seen Zilkenberg, so he knows that there's a player pushing up toward the A bomb site, but he's going to have to deal with him quickly because Short is being pressured with a bit of utility as well. Luckily, slowly helps him out and gets rid of Zilkenberg, but slowly will then subsequently fall. 20 seconds to get the bomb down here, though, for Marzali, and they are going to have to start moving. USP comes out. Not sure about that one for Dan King. It's going to have to be the AWP, if anything. And in this case, it's the AK that reigns supreme. Sogu will win the round for Marzali. Three up for them and two on the trot. Starting to look a bit better. Yeah, Sogu is a Mongolian veteran of many iterations of different successful Mongolian teams and he's showing his prowess here against a pretty difficult opponent. 3k for him in a very critical round to break the CT economy. That's going to be Marzali. Still down 6 and 3 but if they complete this anti-eco 6 and 4 then you could start to see them getting rolling here on their map pick. What kind of craziness has Tyloo got prepared for us here? It's a bit of a stack towards mid doors. Look at somebody. He's like, he's itching. He's ready to go. He's like, when can Can't we go, boys? Can't stand still. <laughs> when can we go? <laughs> uh, Let me you out. gotta love him. Oh, scary times for machine gun. <laughs> One Molotov. Ruins your whole strat. Nice spray. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually Mara that got the final kill there. So it wasn't quite the ace for machine gun, but either way, well done. Look at him. Just uh, chilling with his hat. Easy as you like. Hmm. More of a beanie, really. Okay. You're just gatekeeping. 421, now, are you? 421 damage in round 10, by the way. There you go. Standard for machine gun. Yeah. What is this? Is 2015? 2015? 2016? Yeah. Bring back 2015 machine gun. 2015 machine. It's got a good ring to it. In 2015, we'd have been saying Mongols are going to win this match 2 0. Yes, sir. Dan King going to pick up Sogu. So one of the critical players out of the equation, Zilkenberg, trying to get the hell out of long. Dan King might not have even been born in 2015. Good news. <laughs> he's crept his way up catwalk. He's in. The, he's where the CTs buy guns, Jordan. Does he get to buy guns there as well? Maybe. But he's got to buy them with bullets. Well, not a bad place to be. It's going to make the rotations very difficult for Tai Lu. You need to rotate if you don't lose any players on any kind of the map, part, part of the map. So, uh, we'll see. Can they get any picks on the extremities? Silk and Mara chilling on either side. Machine gun walking around with an AWP. Off for a le leisurely stroll with his beautiful hat. Okay. That's round. One would say so. Two kills on the A bomb site. Oh, that's beautiful. Somebody just charges out and along. News is putting on a clinic. 
this is the man that, uh, I mean, has less of a known name than Azilka or a Machine Gun, even Amara being on Mongol Sogu, yep. but he has been the most impressive by far so far. Yeah, 12 and 7. Doing a great job for Marzali here. Keeping them in the game. It was looking really tough for a moment. Down 2 and 6. In fact, actually 1 and 6. And now they're going to be back 5 and 6. Maybe some more damage here onto the Tyloo economy. Summer does just get across somehow. <laughs> Almost killed Zilk. Yeah. Slowly does well on Tamara. It's important to keep these two rifles alive. Palu's economy is still pretty cooked. Marzala, they continue plugging away, looking to even the score if they can potentially beat a Tyloo who will be on probably upgraded pistols with two rifles. Definitely doable. Beautiful work from News. Well aware that uh, Tyloo was going for a bit of a long setup. He, he runs straight up Cat, sneaks his way into CT spawn and bides his time until 50 seconds and out he pops. A 3k cleaning out the entirety of that A side of the map. Attack force for Tyloo. Maybe the first crack starting to show for them here early on in the road to Rio as well. We sort of went into this saying like Tyloo's probably the front runner by a large margin. They're definitely the front runner, but by how much of a margin the question really was. And it looked like it was going to be a large one when they started off this map. But Marzali doing a really good job of bringing it back into a pretty reasonable spot. They look very controlled in the way that they're playing Dust 2 so far. They're not overcommitting to anything. They're taking their time, working their way through the map, trying to make high percentage decisions, allowing the individuals to make some good, uh, good uh, decisions. Again, long control for Mars alive. Somebody has got his knife out. You move faster with the knife, Jordan. Indeed you do. Even I am aware of this. Somebody's got to go fast, man. Fast straight to his death. Slowly he's pushed out to upper dark. <laughs> just don't, just don't see that angle too often. No. But I guess, you know, given the way that Tyler's actually been playing on this CT side, it's maybe not that much of a surprise that News is going to hold that angle. You know, that's probably the third time or the fourth time that we've actually seen slowly pushing out into upper dark. We're consistently seeing somebody pushing out, not over toward the B side of the map, but it's a possibility, right, that Marzalai has to expect. News is just that bloke in the ESCA puck that just doesn't leave spawn. So. Oh, he's got a kill for it. Some of though in a one or two. Probably didn't expect it to be this kind of a situation for him. <laughs> got to throw the grenade. Terrible throw. Panic nade. Look, I like to see you turn around and throw a grenade much better than that. I he's going to get onto the side. If he, actually, if he kills Soku here, he can he's win got the round. Hit. Oh, maybe there was one on the site. I don't know. Either way, he certainly seemed keen to try and take that challenge pretty quickly. So you have to imagine there was a kit somewhere. Uh, but he doesn't. Piece. Participation award for Summer. 354 damage. And not around. Double up. Summer and Danking. This is what I was kind of looking forward to, in all honesty. So reasonably scary double up for this new Tai Lu squad. True. Unlimited amounts of money for Marzali moving into the rest of this half. Tai Lu trying to get a few on the tail end. Beautiful stuff. News is just putting on a clinic. One for one, though. Both authors flashed. Sogu going to try and hold on to control of long. I hiding think behind the blue bin. They have a pretty good idea that Sogu was hiding there. Dan oh. King! He's run at him. Shotgun orb. Ha! When you've mollied him. Like, why not just let him peek? <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it. Put that one in the frag movie. Slowly, it just locks down that B hit. Machine Gun going to trade one back, though, and that was the only CT left on that side of the map. Oh, my God. A one on three. Let's see if Machine Gun can roll back the years. Yeah, let's see. 2015, engage. He drops a bit of the utility over onto a window. Has to get Summer first. Could have been a winnable aim duel, but does drop in the end. So no excitement this time. Seven and six is the scoreline. Tyloo. Peg a pretty important one back, just ensuring that Marzali can't run away with this half. Ensuring that they can continue to buy as well. Don't want to be getting reset towards the tail end of this one. Well, that's a good introduction to Dan King for anyone who hasn't seen him play before. Really is not missing a beat. 
terms of his usual play style. Nice stuff from Zilk. Gets a tag onto somebody early on. Mazalai this time. Not grabbing control of long, but they're not going to be slowing down. Looks like they want to very quickly put some pressure towards mid doors or catwalk here. Somebody once again. Looks like he's getting ready to push through bedroom. This time low on HP though, so hopefully we won't be seeing that. Danking. I think actually Marzali flash themselves there, so Danking doesn't end up having much of a contest, but drops down anyway. So a little bit of control being taken here by Marzali. Danking forced all the way back into the site. One less angle that Marzali needs to be worried about. They are very much grouped up towards Catwalk here. Smoke thrown out mid to B. Not much of a reaction out of Tyloo. Some is orping from the doors. Here they go. Up catwalk. Easy one for Dan King. Well, how many more can he find? News down already. Easily cleaned up. Great shots by Mara. And there's a couple more opportunities here for him. Attacker takes a bit of damage, but so too does Mara. At the very least, somebody is locking down the long doors. And so that is in the control of Tyloo. But it's going to be a long and CT retake up onto the A side, and they have just lost somebody. So, a couple of players down by the looks of things, although slowly does just win an aim duel. Swings it back to a three versus three, but I'm not sure how comfortable Tyler will be feeling here. Marzali with all of the control of the bomb site, they can choose when to peek, and attacker really just has to play reactively, which won't go his way. Be nice to save that AWP through for some up. It looks like he might be given the opportunity to do. Zilkenberg will walk right into his crosshair. A nice 3k for some of it. The round will still go to Marzali. Yeah, and into the day, they're going to have enough cash to buy in the next anyway. Whereas Summer, I mean, he, getting those three kills with the AWP gives them enough to buy a flash and drop someone a M4. So, uh, you know, not the, not the worst thing in the end of the world. Even if he only earned the plus 300 towards the tail end. I think he might keep the M4 for himself and drop that AWP over to Danking who looks to go glass cannon here. Yep, much better buy than they would have been able to get otherwise. Someone wouldn't have a primary weapon in terms of a M4. Probably would have to go down to an SMG or a Fabus. So, pretty neck and neck so far. A lot of the games have been in the first half, at least the ones that we've seen today on the mainstream. Pretty impressed by Marzali so far. Pretty controlled um, decision-making from them, so... Every time they go and take long or catwalk, they're just working their way methodically through the map using their utility. Had a couple of rounds where individuals were able to thread the needle in terms of getting uh, through the gaps in the defense and giving them some freebies. News in particular has definitely impressed me. It's much lower around here from Marzali. They set up default. They just watch the angles right now and see whether or not Tyler is going to push. And I guess that's the reason for a much slower round. We're going to reset that one by the looks of things and head into a pause at seven apiece. Bit of an interesting situation that we find ourselves in here. If you would have asked me if Marzali was going to keep up with Tyloo here on Dust2, I probably would have said I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. I can't say I'm surprised. I think the main thing I'm surprised about is how well News is playing so far and, and some of the individual plays that the man's making. Um, looking at the names of Marzali on paper, I can't say I'm surprised that they're able to keep up with a team um, like Tyloo with their brand new roster. It's just good to see. Mongolia looking pretty premium at the moment. Yeah, definitely. The region as a whole. And uh, if we do get to chat with one of the guys from Marzali after this match, I'm going to ask him about it. I'm going to sort of throw the question of, you know, what's it what's it kind of like in Mongolia right now as far as Counter-Strike is concerned? Because it really does seem like the region's kind of taking pretty good strides and following in the footsteps of Thailand at the detriment of the likes of uh, Korea and Singapore. We're starting to see a new look Southeast Asian Counter-Strike scene. Yeah. I don't know if uh, Mongolia counts as Southeast Asia. Sure, uh, I guess, but... When I say Southeast Asia, right, what I really should be saying is everywhere in Asia apart from China. Because it sort of feels like those are the two categories right now. You've got Chinese Counter-Strike and then you've got everyone else Counter-Strike. Then you've got ES. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, we are running it back. This time around going to be a bit of a catwalk boost out from Tyloo. 
See if Dan King can head up there and find something. He definitely will be finding something pretty quickly as News is making his way right around the corner. It's going to be a head stack. A 1B from News. Traded back by Dan King. Could be worse for Marzali, to be quite honest. Well, they've got long control. They have actually been pretty good in converting these 4 and 4s into round wins. Typically getting into the A-bomb site pretty comfortably. This time it might be a little more difficult though because there's two players there from Tai Lu. But what I'm seeing right now doesn't make me too confident. Zilkenberg just Ooh. walks up short. Danking and somebody have got no idea. Their backs are turned. And that's Marzali into the A-bomb site. Might as well be the round as well. Of course, Tai Lu will try to make something happen. That is an interesting play from Summer, charging through the smoke, spamming away, but is dealt with accordingly by Zilkenberg, giving that the respect it deserves. And that is to say, not a lot. Slowly is on his own. What and can he what do? For? He really hasn't had a whole lot of action so far. I feel like he's just been walking around, getting the kills that he, he could find. All things considered, Tyloo started off well, six rounds early on the board. And then Marzali able to come back and turn it into an 8-7. So uh, definitely a tough one coming out here for Tyloo, it seems. If they're going to win this map, they're going to have to do it the hard way. Yeah, well, you can still say, though, that uh, Dust2 definitely a little bit T-sided in terms of a map at the moment. So I'd say Tyloo on their opponent's map pick have done a fairly good job of getting seven rounds on the CT spied, uh, side despite, you know, Running into some difficulties, flashes out mid, Ooh. Zilk getting one beat by Summer pretty early on. There's a two-man advantage for Tai Lu. Dan King on the entry there for them as he cleans up Mara. Now News, who was the standout in the first half for Marzali, looks to start well in the second half as well, but is just not quite managing to hang on to that second frag, which could have made a difference to the round. Now it's Sogu all alone. The B-bomb site has already been taken by Tai Lu and he is on his rotate across, but they're not making life easy for him. Flashes in his face, and he's really got no idea where all of these T's are. So the chances of winning this round, slim to none. Probably just hold on to the armor, nothing wrong with that. So nice start for Tai Lu on their T side. See if they can start to turn this game around. They definitely ran into some difficulties. Um, but, uh, you know, might just be a CT side thing. Perhaps. Good way to start the day here for Tai Lu in the second half. Just around on the board, sets things up nicely. More importantly, it stops Mars alive from feeling too comfortable in the CT shoes. There is going to be a force buy, though, through from Marzali, and they'll try and do much the same as what Tyler was able to do to them in some rounds. Bearing in mind, Dan King with the scout had a few pretty impressive plays. That's what Zilkenberg will be looking for here as well. No armor on him. That'll be a bit rough if things get into a close-range engagement. It's pretty much hit heads or die. Force out from Marzali. See if it will bear any fruit for them. It will be the scout on Zilk. Nice tag onto Dan King in the middle to start things off. Mara had on an island here towards Catwalk. Needs to be careful not to be punished for being so aggressive in this part of the map. Throws a bit of a progression smoke over there and runs into attacker, which never ends well for most people. Did not end well for Mara either. Slow map control being taken by Tyloo. Obviously, they're taking control of, like, really nothing but Xbox at the moment. Into Upper Dark, though, does go News. And again, he's good for one, but one is all that he's going to grab. Maybe this prompts Tyloo into a bit of a rotation toward the B bomb site. You can see the bomb on the move in the hands of Attacker right now. Or rather slowly. Machine gun close with the CZ. Probably, uh, like you said, with news, good for one. But if Tyloo get a roll on into this B-bomb site, maybe difficult. Sogu's pushed up into long doors, gathering more and more information as the clock starts to tick down. It should be fairly obvious to Marzali where the emphasis and uh, focus will be for Tyloo moving forward. Machine gun, nice timing to peek out and take out attacker. Well, now he's got a chance for a little bit more. If he kills slowly, Ooh. it could be the round over. 
Won't quite get that done. Soku, though, on the wrap on in. And he denied that plant, actually. That's... Slowly, he's very low. And both of Tyler are charging towards the A side of the map. Ooh, just doesn't quite get there in time. Yes, slowly will go down, but it wasn't the timing that he needed. If he denies the plant, can win the round. But from here, a really tough ask with just a Galil. Soku's got a kit, though, and he's got plenty of time to work with to isolate some of these duels. Tyler going to have to play it from the window and door side. Does work his way out from upper tunnel. Somebody takes an aggressive peek on in. 12 HP is all that Soku's left on, but it is a 1v1, and oh, a 1v1 is going to be winnable. Danking, he won't be peeking it in time. Oh. And that is a round win for Soku and a round win for Marzali. You have to say, come on. Somebody's just wide peek straight yeah. out window. Didn't look like there was any communication to Dan King, any communication between them. That was a somebody play if I've ever seen it. Yep. And that has thrown that round out in the bin for Tyloo. Well, only one player surviving, which means Ma Marzali is broke. And it's looking like Tyloo are going to try to force up. Dan King getting some scout tags early on, softening up some of these CTs, which might make this easier to win for Tyloo. Somebody... He's got a little gap in that smoke. He might be able to pick Sogu here if he's not careful. He'd really like to after the last round. Sogu, however, won't be prompted into any silly plays. Doesn't have the somebody blood running through his ve his veins. No, he's definitely looking quite controlled today. Danking with the scout, however, has been somewhat deadly. So we can't count Tyloo out of this round, particularly if they can just walk up onto A and get the bomb plant down. Yep, walking up short, both of these Master Lai players, Soku and Mara, choosing to play towards long. It will have to be a full retake from Master Lai, who's set up to deal with a mid to B. Some mid to B utility being thrown out by somebody, but like you said, Tyloo, they're walking straight up onto A, definitely telegraphing it with a couple of pieces of utility here. Bomb yeah. is going down. Plant for short, which is an area of the map that they have great control of. Somebody is watching the mid doors for a push just like this one that Machine Gun has got going on. Let's be prepared. Somebody starts well. There's two for him as well. Oh no, it's all gone wrong for Marzali. You could just see it coming. Somebody, he is a phenomenal explosive player in moments like that. And Tyloo is going to pick up the round as a result. Summer takes the head off of Mara as well. And what do you know? Tyloo go through with five guns alive. They don't really manage to upgrade too much. But hey, it's around on the board. I remember uh, we were talking about somebody recently. And Blair said, uh, somebody's like your ex. I mean, in that in that last round, you would be pretty pissed off at him for taking that one-on-one. -on -one. But this round, it's like, it's like it never happened. Yeah. He's just starry-eyed looking at him like, you're amazing, somebody. Who cares what even happened last round? You smashed my Xbox with a hammer? Don't remember it. Oh, you're looking pretty nice today, actually. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He's popping off again. Peek towards long. Looking great. Nine apiece. Tai Lu looking to close out this anti-eco. Well, actually, it's an anti-force. Yeah, Summer's not in a bad spot to deal with the push coming out here from Marzali, which News has sort of done a couple of times, so he's kind of telegraphed his intentions. Nice flick on a machine gun. That could have been a scary position for Summer had he not hit that shot. Overall, though, the round looking really clean here for Tyloo. There goes Mara. Uh, pretty quick one for the T side, and they're yeah. up 10 to 9, back in front. And you were looking at a force out of Marzali in that last round when Tyloo had a hell of a lot of money. It's not like they would have even been reset if Marzali had won that round, and off the back of forcing in that last round, Marzali, they're very poor. They're going to have to take a singular save, and Tyloo's already got, what, 5 plus K in the bank on all of their players. So following this anti-eco, Tyloo is going to have a hell of a lot of money to start moving their way through the rest of this half, and this is going to be a very co long comeback road on the CT side, no less for a team like Marzali. It's a very difficult position. Five stack. With the USPs towards mid, something that we saw Tyloo doing very similarly on their own eco round, although they were all coming through the mid doors, the result won't quite be the same, actually, as this is working out for Marzali. Tyloo have dropped the ball a little bit, and if Summer fails to check the angle, it's going to be another kill goes the way of the CT side. Can you believe it? What am I watching right now? Slowly and somebody to try and salvage the round. 
Gone out of the question. They've been given two frags to even up the account. Machine Gun goes down as well to some nice play spray from Slowly, and it's all going to be on Zilkenberg with nothing but a USP. Yeah, unfortunately not one of the players that was able to pick up a weapon. But even still, to get it to that point, not a bad job done here by Marzalite. Four on two, though. They've definitely thrown that one in the bin and in the context of how this game is going for them. Uh, honestly, winning a round like this would put them back into contention, whereas uh, now they're definitely going to have to work a little bit harder for it. Yeah, that actually might have been the make or break round for Marzali. I know there's still plenty left. Yeah. But sometimes you look at a series like this and you see it end up going like 16-11 or 16-10 or something. Uh, and you think, well, you know what? If Marzali would have won that round, it could have been a completely different story. But here we are. Tyler, we're going to probably go up 11-9. and nine. Mm -hmm. Silkenberg with a scout in hand. Doesn't quite deal with slowly as quickly as he would have liked, funnily enough. No pun intended. <laughs> He's going to back out, try and save the Galil. Not a huge major prize for him, but still something. Well, up eleven to nine now, Ty Lu. Plenty of cash in the bank. Ten plus K on most of their players. Going to be feeling pretty comfortable in terms of the economy. Get a little thrown over to news. Rifles across the board. No AWP for Marzalite. There you go. I that do remember that. That shows you the kind of caliber that we've got in this Marzali roster. Yep. Cannot count them out. These guys, uh, some of them, have been champions of this region. It was quite a good rivalry back in the day between Renegades and uh, Mongols. But one team has continued on their upward trajectory, and the one team has not. One guess as to which is which. Marzali still playing here in the Asian region. And at the moment, struggling against Tai Lu. But it's not over for either t either side right now. Difficulty for Marzali in this round is that they come in with a bunch of rifles, but not that much utility. And what they had, they have already used. Tai Lu taking control of short. Have got still two players minding the extremities. Somebody and Summer. Slowly minding the mid-doors. 58 seconds to go. The game plan here for Tai Lu in the late round. Someone's thrown that deep lurk smoke. Keep those B site defenders guessing. Machine gun. This Ooh. is something you'd see a few years ago getting aggressive. Definitely would have seen the head of one of those Tai Lu players. Attacker continues forward, is flashed out and has to retreat. Whoa. Zilkenberg doubles down in mid. It's somebody on slowly that have dropped. And he's quickly back up into the B-bomb site to give News a bit of a hand. Not that News really needs a hand. He's been good so far today. That said, this two three-pronged attack from Ty Lu, in fact, is going to be good enough to get them into the B site. And now a bomb plant is going down. It's two on three. It's winnable here for Ty Lu. Summer really needed to win that aim duel, though. But let's see oh. what attacker can do. Oh, man, it was so close. That spray transfer onto Machine Gun, just not quite landing. But the second shot, oh, it was crisp. You could have seen him just swinging that spray around yep. and uh, closing out that 1v3. But Machine Gun manages to keep his head on his shoulders. And uh, that's going to give Miles Delai their 10th. Look at the money for Ty Lu, though. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's what I was saying. This is why Bonkers. this this is why this is why comeback is impossible for Marzali. This is why I was saying if they had won that four on two in the eco round, they would have made their job ten times easier. But now, look at that round. 1v1. CT's had no money. Tyloo's got eight, like still three plus K in the bank on all of their players. And a few of them 6K plus as well. So <laughs> let's just uh, make sure we're investing in the Tai Lu fund as opposed to the Marzali one right now because I'm sure the return is a little bit better with the T side at the moment. That was uh, a great round out of Silk though. Yeah. Getting a double kill in mid makes a big difference. Yep. 
Those are the kind of plays that we want to be seeing out of these Mongolian vets. Certainly. And nice play from him once again. Look at Sharp on the M4, Jordan. Well, starting to fire up, and that is exactly what Marzali is going to be looking for. Speaking of fire, that'll be put out by the smoke, but Machine Gun and News, they've grabbed the killer piece slowly and somebody don't really have a chance now. They're surrounded by Marzali players, and we're back to 11 apiece. What about now, Pilly? The respect is, is gone. It's still impossible. The respect's out the window. Look at him. Five on two, they're just crushing them from all sides. That's what I want to be seeing from Marzali. Excellent. And now Tai Lu investing what little money they have. Was a hell of a lot more a couple rounds ago, but you lose a few uh, of these T-side gun rounds, and all of a sudden, you can start to be looking a little bit poorer, and Marzali with five alive in that last round, starting to build up their cash. Might be here for a map upset. Well, yeah. Still plenty more rounds to play with yet, though. It's Marzali's map choice, though. So is it an upset if Tai Lu wins, or is it an upset if Marzali wins? I don't know. I suppose we'll find the answer throughout the course of the road to Rio, because we did have our uh, reservations about Marzali, but we could say the same thing about Tai Lu, obviously, with these new roster changes here. We'll see how many more rounds Zilkeberg looks like that, and I'll be able to answer the question, Jordan. Marzali looking sharp today. Tai Lu, once again, Summer and Somebody minding the extremities. The other three lads working up short and taking control. Still a minute left to play with. Marzali CT defense is more trended towards holding a mid to B currently. Will be trying to play retake should a short execute come in as Somebody is going to throw that jump throw Molotov. That will flush out Sogu, who was to the left side of doors. And the counter molly comes down from Sogu as well to keep somebody at bay. But here goes Tai Lu into the A bomb site. Attacker drops down onto CT spawn. And the rest of Tai Lu make their way into the bomb site. Pretty clean from Tai Lu Ooh. getting into the site. But now, how do they go about holding the site? You could have seen that some of that spray connecting from Zilk makes his way through CT. Checks for Attacker, very well aware of his positioning. Uh, Attack has no choice but to go aggressive there, and he makes it work! Two kills! Unbelievable! No more, though, as he's shut down by News. Four on three, and Attacker might well have done enough there from a very, very tough position to give Tai Lu the round. Somebody lurks behind News, and that's going to be that. Marzali have to back away, have to let this one reset. It's going to be 12 to 11, and the real thing is going to be for Marzali trying to keep these guns alive. Yeah, they have a little bit of cash in the back pocket, so they definitely need to be holding on to them. But Tai Lu, they can't necessarily afford to be throwing all of these away. It's definitely worth it if they take that gun out of the hands of Sogu, because you do see Zilkenberg is the main man who's a little bit poorer. So taking that extra rifle out of their hands means that uh, somebody has to go down to an SMG or a Thamus. Uh, I think an AWP was thrown over there towards Zilk. Can't Fantastic believe it. performance from Attacker. He should have been cleared out there yeah. without getting a single kill, if you ask me. And at the very least, he should have been traded down. Either way, Danking. I was expecting some fireworks. He doesn't connect it this time through the mid doors. Mm, we're back towards the AWP sort of gameplay. News. Look at him go straight in towards long doors. Is he about to out somebody somebody? I don't think you can. <laughs> An AK in hand here for somebody. And MP9 for news, so we all know the way that that engagement should go. It's really going to be a case of whether or not, if somebody does push into bedroom, does he check the corner? For now, the rest of Tai Lu taking some control in the mid. Some tags onto news. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You can't out somebody somebody because he just expects everyone else to play like him. Wow. Dan King peeking into Zilkenberg's line and uh, look at him. Cops the leg, but he's able to connect the chest shot. Somebody, like you said, is able to deal fairly effectively with news, and Tai Lu are storming onto this A bomb site. It's looking like they're starting to turn the tides here. Certainly is. Sometimes it's just the way that it goes. Summer will try and deal with Mara, which he does effectively. And the rest of Marzali, they're just sort of all over the place right now. Machine Gun's going to slowly walk his way up, but slowly does get the kill. Again, Pardon the pun, wasn't intended. <laughs> oh, no. This will be 13 to 11. The money situation, not good at all for Marzali Sogu. Unlikely to survive. 
That's why these CT sides uh, comebacks are so difficult. That's how many gun rounds you need to win in a row. You need to win like three or four to finally put that T economy in the bin. And unfortunately, look, Marzali only won two of them and then they lost and Tyloo still had money in the bank. And Marzali are uh, broke. That's why sometimes it can be so difficult, as you say. Marzali will call a tactical pause. They've got a couple left here as well, so no reason not to at this point. But I think for Marzali, they're starting to see that light at the end of the tunnel fading a little bit. I feel like that's been the graphic for like every team in the road to Rio so far. All yeah. the text rather. It's like, this team is the best. They have won all of their matches. <laughs> Until now. <laughs> Until dun, they dun. played someone good. Someone dun, from dun. China. <laughs> Oh, boy. It's true, though. You know, you can look at these map sats and whatever, but if you haven't played against your likes of Tyloo, you haven't played against your likes of Vici, you haven't really got your chops within the Asian region just yet, and that is where Marzali is kind of at right now. Look, they're doing well, but it looks it looks like... Uh, I mean, I've seen a lot of Dust 2 games that look like this, and uh, usually it does not go well for the team that's trying to complete that comeback on CT. Oh, and I can imagine why. Just the pistols here for Marzali. It should be a pretty clean one for Tyloo. Running their way into the B-bomb site. Summer, attacker, getting the entries, slowly involved in well, as well. And that is really just a pretty clean anti-eco from Tyloo. Yeah, they end up losing a couple of guns, but look, that's fine as far as I'm concerned. They've got the money in the bank. Getting the round on the board is more important. So Marzali backs against the wall. They've done a fantastic job to even get themselves 11 rounds. At one point, it looked like they were going to be able to take over this game and start to push themselves towards a potential map win. Now the tables have completely turned and they're going to be fighting for their survival here. Not a great buy. A Famous and MP9, uh, plenty of pieces of utility missing for the Marzali boys. Looking like Dan King is going to be looking for this long pick, and of course he's going to hit it, and he just keeps going. Why does he keep going? What? <laughs> you can't you can't tell me that he's supposed to get that frag. <laughs> it's just not supposed to happen like that. Either way, Tyloo lose a couple of players to news, and so, uh, I don't know, what's going on here? Tyloo are getting into the A-bomb site. They're getting the bomb down. Does it favor Marzali? Probably not still. Yeah. Even despite the hard work that News has put in, they're going to oh. need more. And Dan King is on a tear in this round. That's his third frag. It's up to Machine Gun now. The old one-on-three against Ty Lu. You have to ask for him to bring back that 2015 for form and then some to win this round. I would agree with you. Still plenty of utility here for Ty Lu. Dan King's got the majority of it. All he needs to do is just spam that over towards short. Machine Gun will not be able to get into the site. Not that it looks like he's necessarily looking to do so anyway. Just trying to catch anybody on the exits out of that A-bomb site. And that's looking like Ty Lu putting Marzali on the ropes. You can see they're pretty broke. News will have enough loss bonus to be able to get himself a primary rifle. But the rest of the lads looking at around 3k. So they're only going to be able to get pistols and armor or SMGs and armor. And that is definitely not ideal news. Just buying an AWP. Really well done from news, but Look, you got honestly, a feel for him. All I want to know, like, okay, after seeing that round, all I want more than anything in the world now is for Dan King to go international and do that yeah. to somebody relevant. And yeah. I just want to see their face cam reaction. That would be the dream. <laughs> Might have to wait a while for that one, Pilski. Yeah. But maybe Tyloo's going to be the team that'll qualify for the major through the RMR system, of which the Road to Rio is one such tournament. So well, winning this one would be a good step in the right direction, that's Indeed. for sure. Indeed it would. And it looks like they're going to win this map here against Marzali, but they're not going up against uh, an awful buy in this final round. Marzali do manage to scrounge a little bit together here. That's right. So... Let's see, AWP is going to be the main thing you're looking at for news. The main man to make some impact is positioned over here towards middle, where there are plenty of Tyloo players who you could be picking. A three-man setup towards short here for Marzali. Nice pick on the cross, great start for news. Here's a good flash into short. Zilkenberg is going to take advantage of it. Mara did as well. Excellent work from Sogu. And now Tai Lu, they just sort of fall apart a little bit. Dan King's on the B bomb site, but that's not going to help at all. He's gone running oh, straight yes, past news. News. Maximum Get BM. It to him. And there goes Dan King. That's a tilter for sure. He even picks up his AWP as well, just for good measure. Beautiful. 
12 to 15. The game's not over just yet. And that's actually some pretty important money for that CT side. Well, I'll tell you which game's over, Jordan. Yeah. On the B stream, Camel Riders are up 15 and 6. Wow, there you go. Against D13. What map is that on? They're playing Nuke. Did they pick it? Well, Danking trying to find something on the cross. Marzali fighting for that long control. We'll be taking it. Mara's going to get in position there. So, nice little early round map control victory for Marzali to start themselves off nicely. And News wants to continue his good work with this AWP. That's Won't not be how allowed. you do it, though. Yeah. Difficult to challenge a player like Danking, and that is exactly why he's just a little bit too sharp, a little bit too aware. However, Sometimes not as restrained as he needs to be. D13 pick nuke. There you go. And they get it smashed on it. Oh, man. I, I, I just... Honestly, I'm going to go back into VODs. And uh, I just want to know how the casters on ESL CSGO B are reacting to that one. That would be uh, actually an interesting game to take a look at, to be quite honest. A good shot there from Zilkenberg. Doesn't quite land the second one, but he's got plenty more chances here. As Tyloo slowly shoulder peek their way around the corner, trying to get the bomb down on A, which they will be able to do. In the meanwhile, however, Mara has crept on up forward, catches slowly off guard. Summer does well to win that aim duel, but we'll need to see more here from Summer and somebody to core players for this Tyloo roster as it now falls on the Ooh. shoulders of somebody and then his head gets shot off of said shoulders. Marzali will go up to 13. Machine gun looking sharp. Nice couple of kills for the man in that round and a difficult one for Marzali to pull themselves out of considering they lost news so early on in that orb duel over towards middle. Tyloo, money a little shaky. 3k for attacker, 2.7 for slowly. They are going to continue to buy. But could that put them in a position where they have very limited utility? Sharp as you like from Machine Gun, by the way. But, I mean, oh, actually it's a half bite. So, they are just evening up their money. Somebody recognises that he and Dan King have enough money to go for AKs and armour and still buy in the next. Not a bad decision, all things considered. Zuckenberg gets the early pick on to somebody. Tyloo running out with a pretty poor bike here. It should be a pretty easy cleanup from Marzali, considering how it's started off. Good stuff there from Sogu. Really nice, really sharp. Marzali bring it to 14 15. The map is not over just yet. Okay. Here we go. Match point. Tyloo getting a full buy in. How many have they had? Interestingly enough, Danking goes for AK armor in the last round and now cannot afford an AWP. Maybe, I want to say maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. The way that Dan King is playing, I feel like he should have an AK in his hands. But with the shots that he connects sometimes on the AWP, it's probably what you want to see him using here in round number 30. Well, Tyloo, like it's been a pretty slow and methodical map control for them most of these rounds. Haven't seen anything too crazy other than them fighting for long. I don't think we've even seen a single B rush, Jordan. No, not really. So, they are continuing that trend. Attacker and slowly making their way up towards Catwalk, currently joined by Dan King with the bomb. Again, somebody minding the extremities. Some are on the other side of the map, making sure no one from Mars lies gathering too much information or pushing. Sogu and Zilk over towards this A side of the map. And at the moment, Marzali, again, are set up actually for a mid to B, and it will be a B bomb site. Hit three players in position to deal with this one. News has still got a smoke. What other utility have they got? Mara's got a molly. Not looking too ideal here for Tyloo. That smoke into upper tunnels is going to prompt Tyloo to push forward. The entries are actually not that bad, oh. but Mara, he just finishes off the last couple. That is going to be overtime. Marzali complete what you said was the impossible comeback. It's not done just yet. That's they not haven't easy. won the map. That is really not easy. But they've managed to make it to overtime. Okay. Very, very difficult to complete that comeback on the CT side, but Marzali have done it. It's been some pretty sharp rounds, some pretty sharp individual performances on these rifles from both Zilk. Um, I mean, pretty much everyone. Zilk, Machine Guns had a good one. Soku's locked down long. Mara in that last round, good multi-frag. Yep. Been excellent stuff all around, really doing it by committee for Marzali. News, definitely the standout. It's going to be a different story, though, playing in the overtime. Tyloo have some very experienced members on this roster. 
And they've been in higher pressure situations than this. Granted, so does Marzali. So we're hoping to see some really top tier CS coming out here in the next few rounds. Double rifle set up. Silk posted on the line with the AWP. Mollied off. Mara in a good position. Gets the headshot onto attacker. Should no. Slowly's there on low HP. Elects to back away, oh, which the in mate. the end no. might not be a bad shout. The grenade goes a little bit awry, and that's going to keep Slowly alive. Danking in the meanwhile got machine gun. This is looking like a better time to do a B take for Tai Lu. Could be. News over there with the org. He's got a full belt of utility still. Relying on that rifle to have the information. Danking, punishing player after player towards middle. Time and time again. Posted on Catwalk now. Could be picking Sogu as well. Oh, well, you're exactly right. Dan King is taking this round into his own. Three kills already. How many more does he need? Well, none is going to be the answer because Zilkenberg goes ahead and finishes him off. Only one more required for Tai Lu to pick up the first round of OT. And they're going about it quite nicely. Summer finishes news off as he tries to rotate toward the A site, and that is 16 to 15, favoring Tai Lu. 16 6 for the Camel Riders. 10k OT, by the way. So, Marzali are going to run out of money here if they do lose this round. One up for Tai Lu. Now going to go and contest long. It is Sogu who is over there by himself. Going to be throwing out that Molotov. Which should push Dan King off the line. Nicely done. He will take long control by himself. You do have Zilk aggressive boosted up. Catwalk could find himself a freebie towards lower here potentially. Yeah, Tyloo certainly trying to change things up. They had a lot of presence towards long in the regulation time. Now they're putting a bit more presence towards upper tunnels. Wow. Look at the setup from Marzali. Too aggressive in upper. Zilk just picks the head of slowly in towards lower. Then there's the push into upper. Zilk and machine gun rolling back the years. Well, it was a must-win round for Marzali, and they needed someone to step up, and that's exactly what they've got. Mara now getting involved in the equation as well. Damage here could be pretty impactful for, for, for Tai Lu, but they're just not going to be able to find those kills that they need. Dan King is on his own. If he dies here... Could give the double AWP over to Marzali, although they haven't shown much of a tendency to pick the double AWP up in regulation time, so I'm not sure that they will go for that regardless. That's a nice tag onto Zilkenberg. How much more can Dan King get? We'll see another one. Is this a Dan King round? It's starting to shape up like it. His head's been tapped a little bit there by Mara. And finally, he's finished off. It was looking a little scary for a moment there for Marzali, but they do <laughs> get through the second round. I don't know round. if Mara was trying to press E on that AWP and it wasn't working. He did aim at it multiple times. Well, they don't exactly have the money to buy an AWP, so interesting. Don't know if they need it. Three AKs, or two AKs rather, might be preferable. Have that one-shot headshot potential. See who is going to be up 2-1 at half time here. Tai Lu going to fight for long. Looks like it's going to be a brawl towards long once again from both teams. A lot of flashbangs going out from Tai Lu. It's Mara the only one that's trying to hold long here for Marzali. The rest of them have gone back into the A bomb site, but he does a good job on his own. Tai Lu lose their first player already. Look at the setup in towards upper news on the off angle. Attacker could pretty much pop out and take him out at any point here. Dan King's posted on the line as well. Some control of long for Tai Lu, and there's a freebie for attacker. That's going to put a lot of pressure on machine gun here, and he hasn't dropped his molly, Jordan. Do they expect another player? Attacker certainly putting a lot of shots in towards window, but will he check car properly? Yes, what a shot as he drops down. And Tai Lu are going to get into the B bomb site. The round is turning back on its head. Marzali got the first pick, but they haven't done anything since then. And Tai Lu get on in there. 17 to 16. They do win the first half of overtime. Critical rounds as well on the T side. You want to be going up here, headed into that second half. Summer. I mean, he's having quite a good game, actually. Yep. Just quietly plugging away there for Tai Lu. Pretty sure he's the man who's taken on the in-game leadership duties, or at least he was in the last roster. Don't really think that there's anyone else that is going to be taking those in-game leadership duties for Tyloo, realistically. I don't think so. Pretty sure in Ehome, um, it was original Heart or whatever his name was that was doing it. I would assume. 
but what do I really know? Nice entry there from Machine Gun and Mara, Sogu as well. They're all helping each other out. Good wolf packing as Marzalite make their way out onto Long. News lurking around in towards middle. Silk picks up another one up. Dan King trying to do the heavy lifting and get over aggressive because they are down so many players, but Silk punishes him. Need to be careful of the economy, Tai Lu, as well, of course, because again, 10k OT. But they lose that one pretty damn cleanly. So it's going to have to be two on the trot now from either side to win this map. Otherwise, we'll go to another overtime. Tai Lu calling a tactical timeout here. That round is not at all how they wanted things to go to start things off. If they would have picked it up, really put Marzali back onto the back foot again, you know, some more match points to deal with. But I don't know, I feel like Marzali are kind of starting to feel it. They're starting to feel like they can win this map. I mean, they've been in they've been in contention the whole time. There's no point at which Tai Lu has sort of run away, except for maybe that T side economic lead but it was only a one or two round lead where I said they're going to win this game. But even that wasn't guaranteed. It was just a difficult circumstance for Marzali to be able to come back. So the fact that they've been able to close that deficit and now they're really fighting for OT here, I wouldn't be surprised if they do take it, Jordan. Yeah, they're definitely into a much less difficult scenario now with all that money in their back pocket on the T side as well. Very quick push up catwalk from News, which has put him in fantastic positions time and time again to have massive impact for Marzalite. And King kind of watching, but he hasn't actually seen that cross. So somebody, unless he spots him on the shoulder peak here, now News has given away his position, but can he make something of it? Wide swing from somebody. It's a signature strategy of his. He makes it work. Clean double tap into the head of News, and the opening frag this time goes the way of Tai Lu. Yeah, man advantage for them. How will Marzali dig themselves out of this four on five? Attacker trying to push into long doors here could potentially be punished by Sogu if he does walk through the other side of that door. Biding his time. Usually you'll see the push come out maybe 45, 50 seconds, something like that. Maybe a little later. Depends how patient you really want to be. Marzali still grouped up. And there you go. Patience rewarded for Sogu. Zilk could catch another player here with the AWP. I don't think he spotted somebody, and that's going to be to his detriment. Two frags in the round now for somebody. Dan King's holding a nice line onto short. Marzali are kind of trapped here. They can't really go back to B, but they have to go up to short. They have to challenge Dan King, and that is not an easy prospect. He does miss that first shot. Somebody will fall. It's all onto Dan King here, and he's going to find all three kills. Tai Lu, 18, and another match point for them available against Marzali. Still plenty of money for Marzali, though, and it wouldn't be too surprised to see them come away with another T-side round. If News just wins that duel, if he finds a little bit better of a timing, that could have been dif different, but... Uh, Good clean up there from somebody. Was able to push that one away, and that puts Tai Lu on their match point, exactly like you said. Single AWP, pretty good utility across the board. Ooh. Good tag by Zilk. He's looking on point, and it looks like Marzali very quickly heading towards this B side of the map. Well, they're going to be slowed down by the utility that Tai Lu chucks in there. It's a double orb. They're actually going to try and triple boost in tunnels, I think. Double orb on the T side. Interesting. Attacker solo holding on long. Everyone else in toward mid, over toward B for Tai Lu. Oh, this is ballsy from Marzali. Are they really just going to contact walk into upper? Into B. Hasn't really been too much action on the B side of the map for most of this game. Slowly, just shoulder spotting out. He's got no support. The only thing he's got going for him is he's got one counter flash and Summer can flash from mid. Zilkenberg's out mid with an AWP as well, though. And here comes the push from Marzalite. Well, slowly drops his own smoke down. He's going to hide in that one for the moment. It's Summer that opens the account here. Tai Lu, four on four now as Summer falls. But they still need to deal with slowly on the site. Does Marzali machine gun watching and waiting for the peek out from the smoke. But he misses the shot. Traded down by Mara. Numbers advantage is here for Marzali right now. as they plant the bomb on the site. Dan King alive. Attacker alive. Handful of flashes. If they're well placed, you could be blinding a few of these teams and creates enough space to be able to find that two on two you're looking for. Mara and News are low HP as well. Soon will Zilkenberg be two. 
Tanking with an M4. When have you last seen that? He gets the kill under news, draws the peak no. from Silkenberg. It's Danking again that's made the difference for Tyloo. They're going to get the defuse, and that is 19 on the board for them. Tyloo pick up the first map. It was a grind indeed against